It's important for you to know how to create vertical space in Word in order to produce neat and tidy documents. Obviously, most people know that pressing Enter will move the insertion point down the page, resulting in empty lines. But you should avoid relying solely on this technique in professional documents because it can create problems that you might not be aware of until something goes wrong. To understand how to create vertical space effectively in Word documents, first you need to know what a paragraph is in Word. Normally, we think about an English paragraph as a cluster of sentences. Here I'm using Latin instead of English, so you won't be distracted by trying to read the actual text. As you would expect, Word usually also sees a cluster of sentences as a paragraph, because we normally type a bunch of sentences, and when we're done, we press Enter to start a new paragraph. Pressing Enter is the key to understanding paragraphs in Word, because in fact, Word begins a new paragraph each time we press Enter, regardless of whether this follows a complete English paragraph. Creating a hard return is a more specific and technical way to describe what happens when you press Enter. If you haven't done so before, try clicking on the Show Hide command which is located on the Home tab in the Paragraph group, because it will show you where the hard returns exist inside of your document. These special formatting characters do not appear when we print the document, but looking at them can be helpful when we're formatting our own documents or trying to understand the formatting of documents we've received from colleagues or clients. If you type just one word and press Enter, Word will create a paragraph. If you type a single sentence and press Enter, Word will create a paragraph. Even if you press Enter on a blank line, Word will create a paragraph. Paragraph spacing controls the vertical space in between paragraphs by allowing you to manipulate how much space comes before and after each paragraph. On the other hand, Line spacing controls the vertical space within paragraphs. Let's take a quick look at line spacing first. If I wanted to increase the line spacing to say double spacing or 2.0, I would select the contents of my document, go to the Home tab, then the Paragraph group, and click on the Line and Paragraph Spacing command and select 2.0. Alternatively, I could have done this at the outset before I started typing. Now we'll look at paragraph spacing, which is a little bit more complicated. There's more than one way to change the settings for paragraph spacing in Word. I'm going to start by pressing Ctrl and A to select everything in this document. The method I use most is on the Layout tab, Paragraph Group, and Spacing, where you can type a number to precisely control the amount of space before or after a paragraph. Here I'll change the spacing after each paragraph to 24 points so you'll be able to see an obvious difference. In other situations, I might use a different command, starting on the Home tab, Paragraph Group, Line and Paragraph Spacing command, and then add space before paragraph or remove space after paragraph. Let me show you a common situation where the second method is helpful. If you are typing an address on several lines like this, you would notice it looks a little bit strange that there's so much white space between the lines. I can select everything except the last line, go to the Home tab, Paragraph group, Line and Paragraph Spacing Options, and click on Remove Space After Paragraph. It is easy to see that this looks better, the way you would expect to see an address in a typed document. But this isn't the best way to achieve this outcome. Instead, as I type the address, I should end every line except the last one by pressing Shift and Enter. This creates a soft return 
which you can think about as a way to start a new line within the same paragraph before naturally reaching the right margin. Notice that a different symbol appears at the end of each line when I use a soft return. If I were to print this out right now, the formatting symbols would not appear and we might not be able to detect a difference between the two addresses with our bare eyes. But if we continue to work in this document, or if a colleague works on the same document without knowledge of how it was formatted, there could be issues. Even though it wouldn't make sense in a real business letter, I've kept both versions of the address to illustrate the potential problem. I've also changed to a page width view by going to the View tab, Zoom group, and clicking on the page width command so you can observe the spacing more easily. Suppose I prepared this letter for my manager and she said everything looked good, except that she would like for it to have twice as much space between paragraphs. If I select everything and go to the Layout tab, Paragraph group, no number appears inside the after field this time because my current selection uses different spacing in different parts of the document. The first address has zero points of spacing after each paragraph, and the rest of the letter uses eight points of space. I'm going to type 16 and press enter. Right away, you can see how the first address becomes extended while the second address remains intact. You might reason that this problem could have been avoided if I had selected everything except the first address before changing the line spacing. And that's true, but imagine how tedious it would be to do this manually if you had a hundred letters saved inside of the same Word document. Taking some time to explore the paragraph spacing and line spacing settings is worthwhile because it will help you create consistently formatted documents that look polished and professional.